Today we're continuing on with the string manipulation series, string manipulation four, <coughs> specifically remove and replace methods. And the format of the remove and replace methods are basically the new string and then an equal sign and then the original string name dot remove and then two uh, parents and two parameters within pa in the parents an index and a length and the format of the replace method is similar except the two parameters are in quotation marks and the first one's the substring you want replaced and the second one's the replacement substring and I actually would kind of like remove to work more like replace especially for this program so I basically wrote some code using the length and the index of uh, string manipulation methods to make remove act like replace. So in my version of remove, you just specify a substring and it finds the first substring that matches that and removes it from the string. So I've sort of created a new remove based on what I want it to do. This will make a lot more sense if we look at the code. <coughs> the form I'm using basically has a string which I pre-populate with the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. I know, very original. And then I have a substring field and for the case of the replace I have a replace with field. Of course for the remove you just need the substring field. So if we double click on remove and look at the remove uh, event handler. I take the uh, text box uh, substring and I put it into a variable called <coughs> str substring. <coughs> and then I take the uh, main string and I put it in a variable called str string. And then I get the length of the substring using the length method, or the length property rather. And I assign that length to a variable called n for integer ss length. And then if the strings in if the substrings in the string, I use the index of method with the uh, substring as a parameter to return the index of where that substring is in the string or the first one if there's multiple instances so that would go on a variable called ns index assuming it's in there so I need to check for a number of possible error conditions in case the user didn't do what I was expecting him to do if you write user interfaces for any length of time, you realize you've got to write them as though the guy is insane. <laughs> and you have no idea what he's going to do. So basically, first I check that he even typed in a substring by looking at the length of the substring. And if that's zero, I pop up a message box that says you need to type in a substring. And then I look at the uh, index of the uh, substring and the string and if that's minus one indicating it wasn't found I pop up a message box that says substring not found in string and presumably if all these conditions aren't met then uh, the else will, will allow us to do the actual remove so I put in the uh, index of the substring and the string as the first parameter to the remove method and then the length of the substring is a second parameter to the remove method and I put the resulting string back in the uh, string text box and then I just clear the substring uh, text box so we can type something new in if we try uh, <coughs> compiling and running this basically say I type in uh, fox and then type remove you notice the new string appears with fox missing and if I type in quick 
the same thing happens. So basically that works. Transforming the remove command to act more like the replace command. So if we look at the event handler for the replace command, it's very similar to the remove command. And then I get the substring, the uh, replacement string, and the main string. So except for adding the replacement string, it's essentially the same idea. I get the length of the substring and the length of the replacement string. And uh, then I get the index of the substring and the uh, replacement string. And basically all these are just to put up message boxes that say, you know, you need to type in a substring, you need to type in a replacement string, and you the substring isn't found in the string. The replace command, I really just need the substring and the replacement string. So I don't actually need to get most of these values to execute the command, but I need to get them to make sure the command's really able to execute. And then essentially I do a replace with the uh, substring as the first parameter and the replacement string as the second parameter. And then I clear both the uh, substring and the replacement string text boxes. So if we compile and run this, say I type in quick and replace it with slow. <coughs> See, quick's been replaced with slow in the string. And I can take fox and replace it with elephant. Uh, and that happens too. So basically, they're pretty useful commands if you want to do string manipulation. And string manipulation is especially useful for things like. Uh, changing SQL statements like insert or select before you send them through ADO to query a, a SQL Server database. So string manipulation is no small thing in terms of what we're trying to do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned some things from it. Don't forget to subscribe.